Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, continuing on this pandemic project. We're going to see who outlasts who here. Uh, I've got a, quite a few projects in my pail, and from time to time a customer drops one off, so I'm still uh, able to do these on a daily basis and hope keep, hopefully keep us all sane uh, while we go through this uh, kind of stay-at-home practice here. Uh, so, Frank, one of my customers, brought this in. This is a Shimano. It's a TLD20. It's probably about 20 years old. I'm thinking something like that. The, uh, the knocking you're hearing is the swivel. There's a swivel here just hitting on the post. But Frank tells me the clicker's not working. So you engage and there's no, no click. And that's not an unusual thing with the Shimanos or the pens or any of those that are fished heavily under a trolling environment where the clicker is almost always engaged and um, you, you let the line run out and then when you get a hit of course you're busy cranking you never think to take the, the click off because the click is kind of a an alarm that uh, that line's going out and that you've got a hit well over time that's a soft metal and it uh, at the point wears out and it's no longer effective and um, I went online the first thing I did with this is I went to e-replacement parts which is a um, parts distributor for Shimano products, ereplacementparts.com. I think it's all one word, I imagine it's all one word. And um, no luck, the, uh, the part is no longer available. So we're going to try and do a, a I'll call for lack of a better term, a bush fix, it's not terrible. Um, I have a couple of the click tongues from other reels. And uh, I guess I'm just a hoarder in that regard. If a reel breaks beyond repair, uh, kind of like a salvage yard, I just, uh, if there's something on there that might be able to be used, generally I will uh, just put it aside and uh, maybe someday find a, there's a use to it. So Penn actually makes a uh, click pole. It's a replacement for the Long Beach. I happen to have one of those uh, and I have Two of these that I don't have a clue about. I'm thinking this one might be a pen. This one, I I don't know. <laughs> and here's one from a pen side plate. And you can see on the pen ones on the side plate, they're pressed on. So those couldn't be replaced uh, from the factory. However, pen does make the replacement now where you would buy the, uh, the click arm and the uh, click paw and a little... Um, Oh, here's one here, the one I probably will use, and a little C-clip. So this would be an after, uh, after manufacturer kind of a thing to allow you to replace that one with a uh, click pole that has a nice uh, point on it. So we're thinking that's what that is. I can't imagine it would be anything else at this point. It tells me the reel is operating fine otherwise, so I'm not going to do a, uh, a full takedown, but I will show you all about the level drag reel while we're under it. So. The lever drag wheel has a handle that connects to a main gear and that's about it. Underneath here we have a cap with a spring that keeps tension onto the preset. This is your preset uh, swing arm or washer or whatever they may call that term. You'll notice that it has two peaks on it and those peaks ride in the lever drag arm and it's a ramp function. It's, these are not flat. So as you bring those peaks out of the cavity, which would be free spool, might be hard to see here, but there's cavities in here that correspond to those little triangles. As you bring that out of free spool, it increases tension to the point where it gets to uh, the, the full level and it's pulled the uh, clutch plate and the, the drag washer assembly and the spool together. And, uh, and maintains that. So this is kind of the typical set of a, of a lever drag wheel. And then behind here we have a little washer and that washer is just there to uh, kind of present uh, or limit friction to the case itself. So a couple of things, I usually wear a glove, I don't expect this to be messy because I'm not rebuilding the reel. If it becomes that I am going to, to certainly put a glove on. And I'm going to uh, start by taking this case off. Unfortunately the click mechanism is in the back here but there's no way to get to the back case. This is a solid single piece case. Those two screws you see up top are actually holding the harness on for the uh, uh, the rod but uh, you can't take the case off from that side. So we're going to take it off from this side and unfortunately or fortunately for you as a viewer uh, you get to see it all because 
It's the same way you would go in and service the reel. I won't be taking the, the spool apart on this one. There is other uh, videos that I've posted out there, and all of those do show a full service of the uh, Triton series or the, the TLD series of Triton lever drag. So if you need one of those, uh, just search my, my channel for that. And in the meantime, we're just going to continue with this. So I'm taking all of the side plate case screws out now. I think there's about six in total, five, six, something like that. Folks ask me, can we can you use a mechanical screwdriver on, on these? You know, especially when you've got a lot of these, maybe you don't have hand strength and the like. And you can. Um, and you can use it, uh, if you're going to use it, I would say I don't have too much of a problem taking the screws out. I have more of a problem with them on the putting the screws in. Uh, they can over tighten and bind a case or break a case. So if you, uh, if you need those, then uh, go ahead and use them. Don't be afraid too much on the way out, although I've seen the, uh, uh, the heads get stripped because the bit that was being used to those is the wrong bit. However, uh, if you properly have the right bit and all, take them out with the mechanical if you need to. When you go to put them back in, leave them like this and tighten them down uh, that last few turns with your hand if you can. Uh, because that way you won't risk the over tightening of the case. So let's see, we got one more here. Let's go ahead and take that out. Now, if you haven't been inside of a uh, of a lever drag reel, uh, make sure you go get the schematic for it. The schematic is also available on an e replacement parts uh, website where you can order parts for this. It's also available from Mike's Reel Repair up in Canada. Uh, and uh, if you need that, uh, yeah, one more screw. Uh, if you need the uh, to take this reel apart, by all means get that schematic because there's a couple of pieces and parts in here. You want to make sure you know where they go, uh, and it's particularly if you get stuck. Okay, now I think I got them all. I do. We can just simply pull the side plate out here, and here's what's going on behind the scenes. It's a fairly uncomplicated reel. It's a single speed. You have a ball bearing. It uh, is center here and that's turning well. well even though I said I'm not rebuilding the reel I'm just replacing the clicker we'll make sure that gets oiled before we do it you have a spool gear or a pinion gear here there's two sides to that one is actually wider than the other so make sure that uh, you get the right side when you go to reinstall this is your main gear your anti-reverse dog so that you'll see as I spin it it's uh, engaging with the back side of this to hold it in place and your anti-reverse dog spring. Nothing needed on this side plate for what we're doing. Now we can remove the spool. Now if we were to go service the spool, everything's happening under here. You can see that there is a direction here. It says, kind of maybe you can't, it's kind of hard, but it says unscrew and it's got the arrow pointing in this direction. So if you wanted to take this assembly apart, you can grab it on the outside with the ridges turn it, unscrew it, and get to the, the uh, pressure plate or clutch plate and the, um, the drag washer and you can go in and service that. Uh, as I mentioned, I've done that on a different one and uh, if, you're, uh, if you need to do that, then go ahead and, uh, and take care of that. Okay, so here we are. We have a click ring. This one's in good condition, but as I thought, the click tongue or the click dog or the click paw or whatever uh, you're using as the descriptor for that has got a worn tip and that's why this is not engaging. So we're going to hold the C-clip. This has a removable clip. Thank goodness. Otherwise it would be unrepairable. I'm using a pick and I know that's a little hard to see but you can now see that I've removed that clip. I'm going to put that right into my parts tray there so I don't lose it. I should be able to press through now with that uh, dog or the, the arm or whatever they want to call that. I don't want to lose that and I don't want to have it go too far because uh, if it goes too far then I have uh, lost it. Okay, there's your dog. There's two, two washers. One came from behind, one came from above. And you can see as opposed to a uh, a newer one is a, a nice pyramid shaped tongue on that one and not on this. So first thing I'm going to do is try and line these up, see what the uh, the holes are. This one clearly has got a bigger hole. Well, 
not that much. Yeah. Well, no, that's in the body. Okay. So up top here, this one's going to ride like that. So I have another one here. It's got a smaller hole, but it's a bigger dog. And I'm thinking this one may do better. I don't know which one that came from. And um, just looking here, I think this one's going to be the same. Let's take it off just for fun. You want to get as close as you can to these. Again, this is a bush fix, trying to make the best of a bad situation. Now, you don't need to worry too much about the diameter of this, uh, this hole, because all you're doing with this is pushing this, this lever in and out. And if we have these, these little rings here, they're going to give us the base, if you'll notice. That'll give us the base. And then this won't slip through anyway. So the, the only other thing we're going to have to worry about with these is thickness. Is this going to be too thick versus this one? And, and this one looks like the best candidate right now. So I'm just looking at that, making sure that I have enough room. I'm going to put that little one on top again. And then we'll see as we pack it down, do we have enough room? I'm looking for the slot now. It's maybe it's very hard to see, I know, because of the way that I'm holding this. But there is a slot here where that C-clip is going to ride, and we have enough. So we're going to go ahead and take this assembly. I'm going to reinstall. This has got a little bit of greening on it, so um, when I put that back in, we will make sure that... Uh, well, we're going to put that glove on now because we're going to use a little bit of oil in that. And again, I don't like using the oils and the like when I uh, when I do use them. I want to make sure that I'm protected. So he's got some greening in there, some old uh, ocean salt or whatever. It wouldn't be corrosion because it's a plastic case. So we're just going to make sure that we, we give that a nice little cleaning while we're at it. There's no sense going back and installing something that... Uh, needs a little service. I'm also going to do the same thing here. I'm going to use some penetrating oil just to uh, get that, uh, that built up of salt or whatever it may be out of there. I'll just wipe that down. All right, so let's try this then. We're going to put this in. And we know we're pretty close on the reach. In other words, this one's about the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and it's kind of hard for me to, to show you this in the camera, and I apologize if I'm going off camera with this, but that's what you want to do. You want to put the click tongue into the, the click ring. We're a little bit off center here. I do believe we're going to be able to work this just fine. I'm going to take the smaller washer now and put that on top where it came from. Then I'm going to go back into my tray here and get that little C-clip. And this is where it all gets fun because you don't have a lot of working room. So this may be a few trial and errors here to get this right. So you want to line it up something like that. It might be even hard to see, but the C-clip is just proud here. Now you can see it up there. And I want to grab a uh, pliers and pull that in. And watch these things, especially when you can't get a good grip. They tend to fly. I have a variety of these pliers trying to get the right one. All right, we press that in. Hopefully you can see that here. Using my pick to show you, but we have a, a piece on here. Again, we got a little bit higher or, or bigger hole, but uh, here's your click. And it's, it's going in and doing what it should do. And I don't notice much of a sway. So let's put this back together, give it a try, see how we can do. So that click uh, mechanism should, uh, should last just fine. Thank you very much. So when you go to reinstall, there's a T-bar on the back of your spool here. You've got to make sure it's kind of in the middle. Because if it doesn't get in the middle, it, uh, it won't see properly on the back uh, shelf. Uh, back. There you go, we're in. And of course, whenever I go to put these in, it seems like I, I get that braid trapped in there. All right, next up, I said I was going to put a little oil in that bearing, so 
Let's not make a liar out of me. He said it was fine. We're not going to do a, uh, a tune-up, but I feel badly if I don't put some grease on to the, um, the, bur uh, the pinion gear. And I don't put some grease onto the main gear. That would be kind of nice to do. Not needed to do, but what the heck. Frank's a good customer. Not that I wouldn't do it for everybody. All right, now we're just going to insert the shaft into the gear. Going to line up our uh, our points on the, uh, the case. We're not quite lined up there. There we go. And that's uh, that's easy enough. In we're going to take those five uh, external screws here, five or six. This is where you can go for a cup of coffee because I'm not going to use a mechanical screwdriver and this may take a minute or two. But uh, these TLD lever drags have been around a long time. They're in various sizes. I, uh, I fish with a smaller one. Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, but I don't like, uh, I don't use lever drags too much. I, uh, I basically use the, the good old fashioned star drags, set it and forget it kind of uh, routine. But I, uh, I've got to say, if you're into the um, trolling, if you need to move your uh, your drag settings from time to time, if you uh, if you want to loosen it up or tighten it up, then the lever drag is clearly the way to go. Uh, the star drags are more of a set it and forget it, and uh, if you try adjusting during a fight, uh, you may run the risk of over adjusting and um, having the line snap on you. So uh, that's the set it and forget it mode there. I did a little video on. Uh, on lever drag versus star drag a couple of days ago as part of this pandemic series and uh, you're going to watch that and see how they, they differ mechanically as well but uh, I appreciate all you watching during these difficult times I ask if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe uh, general commercial I do repair fishing reels if you have a reel that uh, you would like repaired because you're uh, you don't want to do it yourself then uh, drop a line to my email which is at the end of this video I'll be happy to to work with you on that uh, restoration and repair it's amazing since I started this uh, this YouTube channel which is it was set up just so I could pass my knowledge along before I uh, I can't do this kind of stuff any longer and uh, I'm amazed at how many folks have contacted me over time with uh, requests. They have a reel that's sitting on the shelf that they used when they were a child, or maybe it was their dad's reel or something like that. And they uh, they see me working on an older reel and uh, ask for me to, to work on it for them, and I'm more than happy to do that. So uh, if, if that's the case, uh, please go ahead and drop me a line. Okay, on the... Um on the trim ring then is one flat screw that goes in the middle here it's got a bevel on it so that it doesn't impede the operation of the lever itself and we have two that are in a collar and they've got rounded heads in case those screws have fallen out of your uh, your parts tray there I guess it's probably good news that I have my alternate uh, click tongues there on the, the, the desk but Keep your desk clean if you can. I'll be going against that in this particular one. But uh, the more parts you keep off your table, the less parts wind up on the floor later. So, and sometimes I just uh, I tend to try and keep things moving on these videos and forget to, to do the practical stuff that I would normally do if I wasn't doing a video. So, let me just tighten this one down. We've got all those exterior parts. I'm just going to move these over to a side where they're not in jeopardy of getting brushed off. All right, on the reinstall of the lever, in case you were watching this one because you have your lever drag apart and you're wondering about that, you have a little click tongue here that's gonna ride in the ridge of the, uh, the side plate here, make that noise when you're moving it up. Uh, you wanna hook the top over the ring first. Sort of like that. Then I like to bring the throw over to the corner here, and I like to set those pyramids into that neutral position, which is the, uh, the lowest point, and then we have the adjuster on. So after you have it set, I like to put it over on this side, tighten it down, 
check the operation, make sure that this is turning. You may have to take this arm off a couple of times. Yeah, we have it turning now. Uh, you'll see if I put the handle on it, how it turns. Uh, turn it all the way over. So you, if, you, uh, if you find you get stuck in the swing, like it stops here, just take the handle off and back it over, and eventually you'll get the right point uh, where those pyramids are aligning properly. Okay, with that then, uh, let's put the handle on. Now I don't have the handle wrench for this. I've been using a uh, uh, channel lock pliers, a small channel lock pliers to tighten. I generally don't like to do that, uh, but I'm not going to go out and get the, the Shimano handle for the one, uh, one piece of this project. So I'm going to tighten this down by hand as much as I can. And then I'm going to just use my pliers here, the channel lock at varying pieces. Just enough to, to turn it where I can get the groove in the handle screw aligned with where the set screw goes. Let's see if we can get that set screw in without too much trouble. Those of you that watch my videos know that that's not, not necessarily easy for me, these small pieces and parts, but uh, eventually, like just right now, I think I got it. So let's put that set screw in. Let's give it a crank. All right, we got it working. Make sure that we have the free spool. So we have the free spool. First strike, second strike. Again, that click is that, uh, that little barrel swivel there. And most importantly, let's find out if we have that, uh, that little click working now. Well, we sure do. So there's the bush fix. You have a, a reel that didn't have the right part. Uh, we were able to find some broken pieces from some side plates that I had. Uh, we were able to find one that actually came off a clip, but that's not, we didn't use that one. Right? I can go put that one back in another time. You can find that these are something that you can order, even if you don't have a, um, a, Shimano, uh, a Shimano parts availability. I did note the pen uh, on mysticparts.com does have a replacement uh, click tongue or click paw uh, for the Long Beach series so or the 209 I, I forget which one it is uh, but either way you can order a replacement there if you have an uh, if you have a broken side plate around not that everybody does but you may find that you can break free the uh, one that's been pressed in and if you find the one that's been pressed in uh, you can file this off it's just it's been peened over so you can file this I'm not going to do that now obviously but you can run a file over that to where it's flush and then you'll find that you can put that in a vise and break this piece off uh, and you'll have the hole there if you find that you have a click tongue but the center hole is too small well you can just drill that one out just be very careful if you go to drill it out make sure that you're holding it with a pliers something like this and uh, or a vise even better clamp it in a vise and just use that hole as the centering point if you have one that's too big well you just saw what we did here there were some washers that went along with this one that uh, filled in the void on both sides of it so even though you have a little bit of play in the shaft here uh, it's certainly functioning and it's certainly a whole lot better uh, than this damaged part here so uh, there you go that's how you do a click uh, replacement on this uh, Shimano TLD20. As I mentioned, I have a full video out there on how to service this one, including taking apart the, uh, the spool assembly to service the lever drag reel uh, insides, which would be the drag and the clutch plate and uh, the springs and bearings. But uh, Frank said this one's working fine. Don't go ahead and do that. Just get me the clicker back. And that's, uh, that's what we did in this exercise here. So I'm going to continue to do these. I'm going to try and post one of these a day during the pandemic kind of keeps us all sane. I know that uh, there's a lot of folks who look forward to these. Uh, if you like this one and you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm always anxious to, uh, to get new subscribers. Uh, if you have comments regarding this reel and others, uh, regardless of whether it's the Shimano, if you have a question on a pen or a Shakespeare or any of those, uh, if you're working on a reel and got stuck along the way, just leave a question in the comments. I'll be happy to try and get back to you and uh, help you along. If you have a reel you want to service, contact me uh, at the uh, email on the end of this, and uh, I'll provide you with some instructions about how to send that reel to me. So 
stay well, stay healthy, uh, stay inside, and uh, we'll all get through this pandemic and we'll all be out fishing sooner rather than later. So with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.